Hey everyone, Madribred here. Pokemon Emerald with only gift Pokemon was a really fun team run. Let's follow that up with a solo run. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Fire Red with a team of only one Larvitar. So Larvitar is a first form rock and ground type Pokemon. It's part of a pseudo legendary evolution line, so it's slow to level up, but has a lot of potential once evolved. But we're not evolving it, so this is what we have to make do with. 300 base stats is slightly lower than that of a first form starter, but I do like that our attack is 64. It's not much, but it's better than what we usually get. By level up, I learn some decent stuff. We don't get a single move with the same type attack bonus until Rock Slide at level 22, but Rock Slide is a solid move that can probably carry us for a long time. Eventually, we're gonna want Earthquake too. That'll be strong. By TM, there isn't really a ton that I'm interested in. I'll get Dig, but either than that, I don't really see anything that I could get for the type coverage. Maybe Brick Break? I mean, it's better than holding onto Screech and never using it, <laughs> which is what I'm usually guilty of. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I think that the early game will be reasonably smooth outside of the Water Gym. The mid game will be fast, and the Pokemon Champion is just gonna be brutal. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Larvitar. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So, right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Charmander with Larvitar so that we can do the whole run with it. I picked to replace Charmander so that our rival would have Squirtle, probably the hardest for us to fight. Our nature is hasty, so less defense, more speed. I mean, we're rock types, so we already resist a decent amount to physical moves. Maybe it's okay to have less defense? I do like having extra speed since Larvitar is a pretty slow Pokemon. I name him Larvesta because that's hilarious. Our ability is Guts. Uh, the game describes it badly, but what it actually does is it raises our attack by 50% when we have a status affliction. That could be pretty good. Would be great with Facade, but that TM is post-game, so I can't get it. Well, maybe some fight in the game will get poisoned and it'll give us the strength to beat them. It'd be funny at least. First thing we have to do is make our way past the Rock Gym, but I don't think it's going to take as long as it usually does. Bite is our only attacking move for a long time, and we're not Dark-type, but it's still a decent power move of a type that they don't resist. Plus, we're Rock-type, so we resist everything they're going to throw at us. I think that we'll just win at whatever level we end up getting there at. The real challenge isn't going to be until Cerulean City. The actual travel through the forest is a little bit rough, though. I think I just got poisoned more than usual. It happens sometimes. Literally the first try at the Rock Gym, and we double flinched Geodude so he never hit us. Onyx was faster than us, so we couldn't just flinch him too, but he only did like 13 damage by the end of the fight. We were never in danger. In fact, we didn't even need a single flinch. So I'm obviously fighting everything I can while I travel right now. Larvitar is a slow leveling Pokemon, so I need a lot of extra experience to level him up. We have a usually really hard rival fight coming up as well as the Water Gym. Now, I know we're not beating the Water Gym right now, but I also don't really think that we're beating our rival till we hit level 22 and learn Rock Slide. That's going to be our main move for most of the run. It will allow me to take out Pidgeotto without having to worry about Sand Attack, hopefully. <laughs> I might just end up having to grind outside of town when I get there, but I'm not too worried. I'm feeling hopeful that the early game isn't going to be too bad. On our way there though, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think of it, and everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Wow, so the rival fight was shockingly easy. Pidgeotto never used Sand Attack and obviously couldn't do much damage, but I thought Squirtle would just beat us anyway. Hilariously enough though, the only water move he used was Withdraw. I literally didn't even know he had that on his moveset in Fire Red. I have no idea why he didn't use Water Gun. In fact, I looked it up after the battle on Bulbapedia, and it doesn't even say it has Withdraw. I don't think I've ever seen Bulbapedia be wrong before, that's crazy. Well, even in spite of our bites really not doing much damage anymore, everything just uses normal moves on us, so we won just fine. That means I'm doing Nugget Bridge right away. I'm feeling good about the next chunk of the run. Yeah, we have the Water Gym, and that's gonna be rough. And the SSN is kind of hard to get experience in when you're Rock and Ground type. 
but we're only a few levels away from getting Rock Slide. That's our strongest move until Earthquake, and we won't get that until, what, mid-level 50s? Or until we beat the Ground Gym for the TM. Just whatever happens first. Rock Slide is only 90 accuracy, so it's a little unreliable, but it's pretty strong and it causes flinches, so overall it's a pretty good move, at least by Gen 3 Rock Move standards. We also get the TM for Dig after Nugget Bridge, so we finally have a ground move. It's not nearly as strong as it was in Gen 1, but it's still an alright move. I also went ahead and did the SS Anne early. I really don't think that we're ready for the Water Gym yet, like at all. Plus, there's a TM in here that I want. I grabbed Brick Break, it's a decent fighting move that breaks Reflect and Light Screen. I don't really think I'm going to be running into Reflect or Light Screen very often, but it's the best fighting move that we can learn. As nice as Bite is for the flinches and the fact that it's a special attack in this game, I noticed that its damage is dropping off a lot right now, so it's time for an upgrade. I went after the rival while I was there and totally destroyed him. We didn't even take a single hit. I'm really hoping that Rock Slide and all these levels are enough to let me make short work of Starmie, but I'm worried it's just going to be faster than us anyway and do too much damage with Water Pulse. Starmie is a pretty fast Pokemon after all. Hey, maybe our speed nature will pay off. Man, we instantly got outsped and one shot by Water Pulse. Yeah, I'm gonna have to grind. Hey, maybe I'll do the route east of Vermilion. I haven't gone there in a while. Let's see how many levels that gets me. Well, it got me another three levels, but we still just got outsped in one shot. I don't think I have my effort values maxed out yet. I have maybe another 200 Pokemon to make faint before that happens. So I guess I'll grind against wild Pokemon for a while. All right, finally, at level 35, we get the speed advantage and one shot her instead. Man, that took forever. Of course, the electric gym right after was also super easy. I guess at the end, they powered me up a little bit by paralyzing me, although I'm sure I would have one shot them anyway. Okay, we're making progress again. I think that I want to try the next rival fight early just because the previous one went so well. Not that I think I'm going to have issues going after Giovanni first, it's just fun to change things up. Plus, I get the feeling it's going to be really easy, so I may as well do it while I'm in town. While I make my way over there, though, is a great time to tell you about this episode's sponsor, Chimera. Hey, it's actually properly winter now! I haven't had to shovel yet, but we've had snow stay on the ground for a few days, so that's close enough. You know what I've been wearing to stay warm while I'm out there? As if you have to ask, you already know the answer. I wear this nice puffer jacket I got from Chimera. For context on how well it keeps the heat in, I've been wearing a tank top with this jacket over it just about every time I've gone out in freezing temperatures over the last, I don't know, couple of years. And unless it's really cold, that's all I need. It really does keep you warm. But if you're super cold and you want to have some layers, then their hoodies are the way to go. Either pull over or zip up, both do a great job, plus the hoodies give you a hood. I know that sounds obvious, but it's winter, you're going to need something to cover your head and neck. So if you want to support the channel and look good while doing it, then hit up the link in the description to go to Chimera and pick up something warm to wear this winter. If you're going to go pick something up, then make sure to use the promo code MADRIBRED at checkout to get 10% off your order and to let them know that I sent you. Now I'm going to go fight the rival at the Pokemon Tower early. How do you think it's going to go? Because I'm thinking it might be a sweep. Yeah, we didn't even take a single hit against our rival. I mean, I thought it would be easy, but I didn't think it would be that easy. Well, it's not like we're ready to go for the grass gym for uh, probably a long time, so I just go right to Rocket Hideout. Giovanni should be easy, then we've got the poison gym. I kind of think that one's going to go fine too. Yeah, we can't hit with Dig because most of his team has Levitate, but if he poisons us, then we get 50% more attack, and that's going to be enough to hit really hard with Rock Slide. We'll at least stand a reasonable chance at winning, I think. Plus, if we win that fight early, then we can do the Blaine fight early, and that's always fun. Uh, so Giovanni was a total squash, as expected. Think we're ready for the Poison Gym? Uh, I tried a bunch of times, and I don't think we're necessarily far off having a chance, but we always just get wrecked by Smoke Screen. I think I actually do have to get a bit stronger. I guess that means we're in Sylphco early. Uh, this is one of those runs where I have to clear out the whole building because I really don't think we're making progress until I do. Our options for progress right now are Sylphco Rival Fight and the Poison Gym. I'm hoping that we can get enough levels here to beat the Poison Gym. That will allow us to go beat the Fire Gym and that hopefully the trainers in the Fire Gym will give us enough experience that we can then go beat the Sylphco Rival Fight. Hopefully. 
I'm skeptical about that actually giving us enough experience, what with us being in the slow leveling category. So after clearing out Sylphco, we were at level 49, but even after a ton of tries, we never made Muck faint. Coughing always seemed to open with Sand Attack to lower our attack, then Muck will just spam Minimize and Acid Armor so we can't hit him, and once in a blue moon when we do hit him, we do almost no damage. Eventually, he always hits us with Toxic, and we can't beat him fast enough to not faint to it. It's brutal. I'm gonna have to grind more and hit level 50, then I'll know Earthquake, and maybe we can just take out Muck early. I still need to get lucky enough to keep hitting the rest of his team with Rock Slide after Smokescreen, but maybe we can make it happen. Okay, so the first try at the Poison Gym with Earthquake starts great as Coughing uses Sludge instead of Smokescreen for once, so we took him down without losing accuracy. Thanks to that, we could just use Earthquake to one-shot Muck. That was our first time getting past him. The second coughing had me worried though, since he hit Toxic, then he used a Hyper Potion to waste an extra turn. That puts a strict time limit on how fast we have to win this fight, but it also raises our attack thanks to Guts. Last was Weezing, and although our Rock Slide was hitting hard, he hit Smokescreen to lower our accuracy. It all came down to one last Rock Slide, and we hit, finally getting us the win at the Poison Gym. Man, that was so much harder than I thought it would be. But you know what that means? We get to do the Fire Gym early. It's not super early or anything, but we're still doing it before the Psychic Gym at least. I know they've got two Pokemon with Intimidate, so our attack is going to get cut a lot, but we have Earthquake with the same type attack bonus. I really don't think it's going to be a problem. So I don't say this often, but Blaine actually did the smartest thing he could do. He sent an RK9 as his second Pokemon, so he'd hit us with both Intimidates as early as possible. Shame it didn't pay off for him thanks to critting an Earthquake on RK9, so you know, we just one-shot the only thing that could have possibly taken a hit anyway. Still, I'll give him credit, the AI doesn't normally use abilities to their advantage quite that well. Following that, I tried to give the rival fight a try, and although I think we could have stood a chance if we were a higher level, Blastoise was using Water Gun once to drop us from full health to three health. Not Hydro Pump, not Surf, Water Gun. Yeah, I think that water moves are going to be a nightmare by the end of the run. Uh, I'm going to have to get some levels and come back. Four levels later, and we only take like 80 damage from Water Gun? Now I want to point out that we didn't get crit or like special defense drops or anything either time. I really doubt that I gained much special defense from four level ups as Larvitar, so I think I just got really unlucky with damage ranges on Water Gun on the first try, and then got lucky with it this time. I don't know why else it would do that much less damage after only four level ups, but we ended up sweeping the entire rest of his team because of it, so I'm not going to complain. Okay, next two fights have got to be incredibly easy, right? First, we have Giovanni, who hardly did anything to us before we won. After that is the Psychic Gym, but of course, they're all way too frail to survive Earthquake spam, and none of them are faster than us, so there's nothing that they can do about it. The Grass Gym is also a sweep, now that we're a way higher level than Erica's team, so no problems there. And last for the super easy fights is the Ground Gym, where we didn't take a single hit. How weird is it that in Kanto, the 8th gym is probably the most consistently easy in the game? Like, unless you're doing a solo electric run, I don't think the ground gym ever takes more than one or two tries. Right after that is the second from last rival fight. It always starts fine with Pidgeot going down in one rock slide, but Blastoise is the issue. Without Rain Dance, his water gun brings us to red health. With Rain Dance, it just one-shots us. I was hoping that maybe I could get him to flinch a little and take him out, but it looks like it would take three earthquakes or one rock slide and two earthquakes to actually make him faint, and we can't survive that long. I bet if we just leveled up a few times then we could two-shot it with earthquake though. Just a few levels later and we get this awesome run where he spends the first turn making it rain, we flinch him right after with a rock slide, and then he sits there and lets us earthquake to finish him off. I could have sworn he'd have a hyper potion or something. Execute right after is also easy, but it managed to paralyze us with Stun Spore. We'll hit harder because of it, but it also ruins our speed. It's a good thing that we didn't lose a turn, or else we'd probably have gotten taken out by Solar Beam. Growlithe used Leer before we Earthquaked him down, Alakazam used Calm Mind and tried to disable, but it was a one-shot, and last was Rhydon who couldn't do any real damage to us. That really wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. A part of that is because Alakazam did not fight well, though. That means we're going to the Elite Four, and I really don't know how this is going to go. Lorelei could be hard, but I also think that Rock Slide might just carry us through the fight. 
As long as their slow bro doesn't mess us up too badly, I think we'll be okay. Bruno, on the other hand, I think will destroy us until we can one-shot most of his team. Agatha shouldn't be too hard, but I think that Lance is going to be a serious problem because of Water Onyx with Hydro Pump. I just have to hope that Rock Slide one-shots him. Oh, that's why I didn't have our rifle use Venusaur, by the way, because then he'd have Water Onyx, and I know that would be easier for us to take out than Blastoise. Speaking of, last is our rival, and I know we don't stand a chance in that fight until we're at least level 75, but I figured that we'll need to be that level before we get to him anyway, so whatever. Now that we're the Elite Four, let's take a look at our stats. I don't know. I think we actually stand a chance. I don't think we're beating the entire Elite Four like this, but I also don't think that we're super far off. I might be able to beat Lorelei like this if I'm fast enough and can make them flinch a little bit. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. The first try I had at this fight was amazing. Literally every single Pokemon that we couldn't one-shot was one that we made flinch, so we took no damage going into the Slowbro fight at the end. I figure that would mean easy win when Slowbro one-shot us with Surf. Well, I appreciate the Pokemon gods letting me get that awesome failed run on the first try, because otherwise I'd probably be sat here for a good 10 attempts trying to figure out if I could beat Slowbro if I got to him with full health. You know, if I have to get a few more levels to two-shot with Earthquake, then maybe I could win this with Substitute. I don't know if I'll get a real chance to set it up, but I could try. Let me go track down the Move Tutor for that. Now, it actually took all the way until level 72 before I could do more than half of his health and damage with Earthquake, but the strategy worked. I was able to set up Substitute early in the fight against Cloyster, and it paid off later down the line when Slowbro went for Surf. I'm happy I found something decent to replace Sandstorm with, because I really wasn't getting any use out of that move. Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno. This fight actually went great. Neither Onyx could really do anything to us, so it was an easy time to set up Substitute. That let us take a hit against Hitmonchan so we could easily finish him off, and Hitmonlee was a one-shot. I thought Machamp would still beat us, but he missed Cross Chop, so we won. That was a first try on what I thought might have been the hardest Elite Four member. We do have a bad defense nature, that Cross Chop really could have wrecked us. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. This fight was incredible, because despite them having loads of chances to hit us, they almost never did. We set up Substitute right away, and whenever they take a chance to attack, they just use Double Team or try to put us to sleep. Effect moves don't work on Substitute, so we were basically just giving them free turns. The Gengar at the end hit us once, but we used Rock Slide to get through 90% of the fight with no problems. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. This fight started as well as it could, us making Water Onyx flinch so that he never hit us. That's good, because the alternative is probably just trying until Hydro Pump misses. Against the first Dragonair, I used Substitute, but because we don't have a ton of health, our Substitute doesn't either. We take out Dragonair, but it took out Substitute. For the second Dragonair, I just went for Earthquake early and took some extra damage, but we still beat it. After that, though, it was Dragonite, and we did less than half of its health and damage with Rock Slide, so even though it used Safeguard, we couldn't finish it off, and it took us out on the next round. Well, we left it with a sliver. We can just Rare Candy up a few levels and probably win the whole thing. So I gain a few levels and try a few more times, just to not have to worry about the whole thing, because we crit Dragonite for a one-shot. Last was Aerodactyl, who did a little bit of damage to us, but Rock Slide was still just overpowering it. Whatever, I'll take it. Finally, the Pokémon Champion. I started by using Substitute to block Pidgeotto's Feather Dance, then I one-shot it with Rock Slide. Awesome start. Rhydon was next, and this Earthquake took out our Substitute. I hate how close we are to one-shotting him. At least I got it to use a full restore, but we never got our substitute back. After that was Blastoise, and of course we can't take him out. I tried for Rock Slide to make him flinch, but he just Hydro Pumped us. I bet if we got like three more levels, then we'd one-shot Rhydon and still have our substitute for Blastoise. Let's try that. Okay, so the three extra levels did get us the one-shot against Rhydon, but that didn't get us the win against Blastoise, because of his berry healing him slightly too much for us to get a two-shot. Thanks to that, he gets an extra attack and takes us out. You know what? If he has to use Hydro Pump twice, then I don't think this would take many tries. He's bound to miss one of them in just a few attempts. Three tries later, and we got him to miss, but he still just used a full restore. I thought that we couldn't take him out when we ended up critting to knock him out. And for as cool as that was, 
Executor right after hardly took any damage from us and absolutely destroyed us with Giga Drain. Okay, we need more levels for sure. We can probably beat Executor if we get a flinch or two, but that's going to take forever if I'm also needing a lucky crit on Blastoise. Next try, and although we get past Blastoise much easier, Executor still takes us out. We do stand a chance though. Yeah, he'll heal off Giga Drain if we use Substitute, and we can't two-shot him anymore if that happens. But if we can get him to flinch, then he never gets to use Giga Drain. I'm going to keep trying. Alright, four tries later, and we get the flinch that we were looking for, so we take him down easily. We're back in the game. After that is a hilariously long fight with Alakazam, as he keeps using Reflect, and we use Earthquake to take him to red health. And then he used three four restores. <laughs> we just kept using Earthquake, and he just kept healing. Eventually, I hit a Brick Break to take out his Reflect, because I was afraid it would still be active during the Arcanine fight. But he managed to hit Psychic before going down, so we took quite a bit of damage. Last was RK9, so our attack is down from Intimidate. Earthquake took him to red health. Flamethrower took us to red health. He used a full restore. Earthquake took him back to red health. Then we finished him off with one last hit, getting us the win. That was super fun. I hadn't done a solo run in a few weeks, so it was really fun to come back to it with not only a fire red run, but a solo rock type. Rock and ground types are usually really fun because they run into unique sticking points in these challenges, and it's always fun when I get a chance to use a Pokemon in a game that it wouldn't normally be in. You know, Larvitar, not normally the kind of thing you run into in Fire Red. I really hope you guys like that run. The next Pokemon challenge should be up next Saturday like usual with Pokemon Red with only one Tentacool. Tentacool is actually really great in Gen 1. People make their jokes about it being the Zubat of the sea, and it kind of is, but unlike Zubat, Tentacool is a beast, and I look forward to trying it out. As always, I'm looking at your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Now, it's the outro, uh, but I don't, I don't know if you heard it. Probably not, it probably isn't gonna get picked up by the microphone. But uh, my stomach has been growling for the last, I don't know, two and a half, maybe three pages of this script. <laughs> it's, um, it's 3 p.m. and I have not eaten yet. In fairness, I did wake up pretty late today. I, I was up late working last night, as I probably shouldn't have been, but it had to get done. So my stomach's been growling. So I think I'm just gonna run down there and throw together some kind of breakfast shake and get some food in me. So is there anything I can think of right now that any of you might be interested in that I could say in the outro? Well, some more Raft videos are up in the playlist that won't be public on the channel yet, but you can watch them early if you just click the playlist thing. So you can see me and Jax playing some, uh, playing some Raft. That's a fun time. I'm sure uh, f only 5,000 of you are even remotely interested in that. <laughs> But that's all right, because we have a really fun time recording it, and I'm sure you guys have a fun time watching it. Uh, I'm going to go throw together some kind of breakfast shake, because I am absolutely starving. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.